Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Yes. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Mr. Walter. Yes. Mr. Pete. Yes. Mr. Webster. Yes. Please stand for the final salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> is our self-assessment um, of the HIP process. So what we do as a district is every year we take a look at um, a school year. So this year we're going to look at last year, the 14-15 school year, uh, and, and, and take a look at eight different areas uh, and how we go about our business. And when I say we, as a district, um, the building anti-bullying specialists meet as a group, um, and we go through some different things. And then each has, as part of their school safety team, meets to talk about the school year and, and some of the things that take place. So this material that I'm presenting tonight was actually brought together at the end of last year. Um, we talked about it at safety team meetings last year and then also as a, as a district with anti-bullying specialists at the end of the school year. And then we took the opportunity to talk about it one more time at the beginning of this year as we kick off our initiatives just to see are there some things that we want to start looking at uh, based on what happened last year for this year. <laughs> And then at the end of the month, we need to submit all of our information uh, on our, our self-assessment to the state. Later on in the fall, they will release that information back to us. And then we will post our final uh, grade on the district and the, and the school websites. So that's kind of the process. So at this point, um, what we do is we present all the, uh, all the information to the, uh, to the Board of Education and to the public for comment. Uh, as I said, really the, the process looks at eight core elements. Uh, with 26 indicators, uh, and that looked a lot better when it was on my small little <laughs> screen. Yeah, easy to read. It's still better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, when you look at the scores, a 52 would mean that you are meeting all the expectations um, in your school and as a district. Uh, we are significantly higher in all of our scores than that based on the, the initiatives that we have going on throughout the district, and uh, I'll go through some of those uh, at this point. Uh, what I want to do is just kind of give you an idea of the board and the, the, the community, some idea of what these core elements are and what are they asking us to look for when we go through the process um, at the end of the year. So our first core element is HIP programs, approaches, and other initiatives. And at this time, what they're asking us to answer are questions like, does the school establish, implement, and assess programs throughout the course of the year? Uh, and we do. Uh, we have a number of programs, some that the principals bring to the buildings, our PTA does an outstanding job of supporting our efforts as well. So we do look at those programs and, and, and uh, see where, where things are going well and where we might want to make some changes. Are the programs designed to create school-wide conditions and to prevent and address it? Uh, and they are, and in the elementaries we have a very coordinated effort. We use uh, the New Jersey Bar Association in second step uh, as part of a major foundation of those efforts. Um, and in the middle school and the high school, the health curriculum, as well as all, you know, other programs that, that we use to address those things. Um, our second core element is trainings on the board approved HIP policy. And at this time, we answer questions like, do all school employees, volunteers, and contracted service providers get trained? 
Does the HIP policy training include instruction on preventing HIP on the basis of protected categories? Um, and a lot of that has to do with the legal definition of HIP, which is a little bit different than what we would have all discussed as HIP before the legislation came out. Uh, because it is all about the motivation of the incident in regards to somebody who is in a protected category. That could be race, it could be gender, it could be ethnicity, it could be any number of different things. But when we talk about the legal definition of harassment, intimidation, and bullying, it's important that us as educators understand the difference of that definition as opposed to what we would all have talked about, like I said, before the legislation came out. Um, so that's, that's what that area would cover. Um, Core element number three is other staff instruction and training programs. Do teaching staff get two hours of training on a five-year period on suicide and HIV? And does the ABS school safety team and uh, get professional development to, to support the programs? Uh, for the first three years of the legislation, we made harassment, intimidation, and bullying part of our day one training, which meant that our teachers and our staff, our whole staff, got training every year. We didn't, we didn't do things on a five-year cycle. Uh, this year, as we go into global compliance, we will be in a, you know, teachers will have access and, and staff across all the areas will have access to that on global compliance. So, you know, we will, uh, we have far exceeded that, that expectation up until this point. Um, and in regards to the training, all of our new anti-bullying specialists and our original training all came from Strauss SMA, who was one of the, the, the major leaders in that area in regards to training. Uh, we went to a, a training last year, and again, the new ABS that will be approved tonight will also be going through that training. In addition, a lot of our school safety teams, again, use the New Jersey Bar Association, and they offer workshops where you can bring members of the whole school safety team together to talk about some things that are going on in your building, hear about things that are going on in other buildings, and all of our principals and ABSs have kind of coordinated those efforts to make sure that everybody really understands what their role is. Uh, Number four is curriculum and instruction on HIV and other related information. Does the school provide age-appropriate ongoing instruction? And I kind of talked a little bit about that. Does the school observe the week of respect is really at the core of a lot of the legislation. And we do a, a whole host of things across all the schools when it comes to, uh, to week of respect. Our fifth core element is HIV personnel. And in there we say, does, has the school appointed an ABS? We don't have just one ABS, but we have multiple ABSs in all the buildings just to make sure that people are available to handle situations um, as soon as they arise. Uh, and does the anti-bullying specialists and the school safety teams meet twice a year? In most cases, again, we exceed the number of meetings that we need to have, both at the building level as well as on the, on the district level. Uh, the sixth core element is school level HIP in incident reporting, and does the school implement the district's procedures for reporting it? Um, and basically, we're all obligated when a situation arises to begin an, uh, uh, an investigation very quickly, to notify the parents who are involved in that investigation, to come to a determination and provide it to the superintendent within 10 days, and then to report it at the, at the next board meeting. So everybody is well aware of our, our obligations in those areas. And the last uh, element is HIV reporting. The school has a procedure for staff member reporting, and the grades are posted on the school and district website. So it's getting all that information out. So that's kind of what encompasses the, uh, the uh, you know, when we look at the core elements, all the different the areas. Um, and then when we look at, you know, our district grade report across those areas, um, and this slide has all the individual schools as, as well as the district. Uh, and this year from a district perspective, because I'll get into the schools a little bit individually, uh, but the overall score from a district that's averaging all the scores was a 72. Um, Again, far exceeding what we are required to do, and obviously we are not yet perfect, and we every year look very hard to see what we can do better, um, but that's, that's where we are at this point. When we look at the cases uh, that we investigate throughout the district, again, we, we, we investigated 34 incidents across the district, which is one more than we investigated the year before, uh, but it is much lower than the 109 and the eight, uh, 85 the two years prior to that. So we are still seeing a, a large decrease in the number of investigations. Uh, we spent a lot of time in all the schools talking with students about, you know, the importance of mutual respect and how important it is to focus on two things, teaching and learning. And they understand that if they're going to do something that's going to stop someone from either teaching or learning, those are situations that are going to get addressed. They may not be addressed under the, under the HIB requirements. They may not meet the definition of that. But that doesn't mean that they're not going to uh, not going to be addressed. 
Um, and then when you get into the different schools, for example, the high school scored a 67 um, as, their, as their overall grade looking at last year. Uh, and again, the, the AVS is there, do a fantastic job. And last year it was Shannon Finlow and, and Sierra Thomas. Kathleen Solon will join, and she's on the board agenda to be approved tonight. Um, and they do a lot of great, great things at the high school. Uh, the middle school score was a 75, and Mr. Panzarella and uh, Ms. Barrett are responsible for the ABS and, and, and kind of heading up the efforts of the ABSs at the middle school. Um, at MTES, the score was a 72, uh, and Allison Simone and Sherry Brunekamper were involved last year, and this year Sydney uh, Gotsman will be joining them as a, as a, a leave on a guidance replacement. We'll be helping out in those efforts. At Ridgeway, the score was a 74, uh, and Michelle Simone and Val Schaefer are the ABSs in that building, uh, and coordinating all the efforts there. And at Whiting, the score was a 69, uh, and Tracy Kiernan and Lauren Ryman, along with Mer uh, Meredith Spies, were involved. And this year, you'll see that uh, Megan Drapkin is going to be approved as an ABS as well uh, at the Whiting School. And at Regional Day, the score was a 78. Uh, and Rob Johnson Cohen and Phoebe Pennypacker are the uh, are the ABSs at uh, at the regional day school. So when we when we met as a group, we really kind of wanted to take a look at you know what is this really telling us? And the good news is that there were four areas that we did receive all the points that were were allowable. So we exceeded the expectations in those areas. Uh, and the four areas are the really core instructional uh, and procedural areas that that the legislation deals with. So for example, in curriculum instruction on hidden related information, we got a six out of six. Um, and we're always looking to add new programs. Last year we added the lead and seed program at the middle school, which was another opportunity to kind of uh, address climate and give kids information. Uh, the Mustang Challenge was also introduced at the middle school last year. Uh, Mrs. Mazur has been instrumental in coordinating a lot of these efforts. Uh, and she got involved with the NJPSA and the rewriting of some new curriculum. Uh, so we started to pilot that last year at the elementaries. We're looking at bringing that to the upper elementaries, maybe lower middle school this year uh, that we talked about at the school safety teams. Uh, when we met as ABSs, there's lots of programs that we've had success with, like uh, cyberbullying from the Ocean County Prosecutor's Office. We talked about possibly offering some different parent programs as well. Uh, so it's good to know that in those really critical areas, uh, we are exceeding expectations. We also exceed, uh, had the, the maximum points in school level hit incident reporting, so everybody understands exactly what they're supposed to do and goes through that process, as well as the investigative process um, and the reporting process. Those, so those are some really important areas that, uh, that we felt like we met with some, some tremendous success. Um, in the areas where we did not exceed all the expectations, the state uh, this year in, in a in a good way was very specific in regards to what you would need to meet in order to exceed expectations to get a score, a maximum score of three in an indicator. So for example, in, in area one and area two, um, you would need to be able to, with evidence, document that every contracted service provider who went stepped into your building had been given training on the harassment, intimidation, and bullying. And that was not something that the, the teams were able to feel that they had evidence of, of that kind of a thing. So um, it is very specific, and it's, as we get this information and process it for the next year, it's also things that we say, okay, how can we increase the training? Is there some things we can do with global compliance or something else so that we can look to, to, to do better in these areas? In other staff instruction and training programs, uh, for example, your suicide prevention and your HIP policy had to be kind of presented in conjunct or really as related to each other. Uh, we provide training in both areas. But the teams didn't really feel like that was areas that it was highly coordinated or kind of uh, fed off each other. So that's something, again, that, that we can look to, uh, to look at for this year. Um, and then in core element number five, HIP personnel, we needed evidence that the school safety team specifically made recommendations that were turned into professional development the following year. Uh, and, and the schools were not able to, to make that specific claim while they had great input and there were new programs and things brought in, uh, but across the board that level was, uh, was not something. So we'll look to certainly work in all those different areas um, um, this year. But it, it's, it certainly is an exhaustive process, um, and it's obviously something that we take extremely seriously. Um, 
From a communication standpoint, it's also really important to try to get as many, as many parents as possible to understand that when you use the term bullying, from a school's perspective, we are really talking about the legislative definition of bullying. Uh, and, and I think that's something that we're going to continue to try to, to get out there and clarify for parents so that, um, you know, we can better, or they can better understand the difference between conflict and the difference between bullying. Everything gets addressed, and everything gets addressed appropriately. You know, the question is what, what actions uh, take place to meet that, that legal definition. And so that's something that we will, will continue to, uh, to work on. Any questions? I want to make a point that uh, you just say this afternoon. Uh, so we'll, we'll be putting the PowerPoint uh, on the web page. So if uh, you need to refer to it, we'll be able to do it. Uh, your presentation will be on the web page. Uh, yeah, I'll make it. Uh, make it right <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it up for you. It's the lighting here. It's never, it's never this bright. Move the lighting. It's never. Maybe wait for it. All right, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. A, lot of, a lot of work for both of us. Okay. I uh, just want to start off by kind of reiterating what Mr. Uh, Webster has said. Um, I always uh, chuckle when I hear people say, well, uh, you work in the school district, so I guess you don't do anything in the summer. Uh, it's a lot of work that gets done in the summer. I do want to uh, do a special uh, congratulations for our tech squad, first of all, our technology. We had, again, over 1,200 Chromebooks come in. They implemented it. Uh, we did add an additional staff member, and I think they did a, a great job in the summer of working through that. And all of our uh, support staff worked uh, kind of uh, next to referendum work, so that made it even twice as hard. So some of the things that they normally would do on a regular schedule, they had to delay that and pull back. Uh, and it was a matter of sometimes the custodians moving back and forth between buildings. So our buildings and grounds, our custodians, our secretaries, and our administrators did a great job in the summer. I do want to uh, express my appreciation to them. As far as the beginning of the school year, uh, I thought, again, uh, we had a very good opening. Uh, our uh, bus drivers, uh, again, uh, I talked to them I talked to them the other day. It seems like the only time we talk about the bus drivers is if there's a problem. Uh, but they do a great job. Uh, we're talking about bringing like 3,000 in school every day, back and forth, trips and so forth. And uh, again, there's always the first day is always interesting because every every parent, and especially in kindergarten, have videotapes out there and we, we see the student getting on the bus and getting off the bus. And, uh, so uh, we were able to work most of those things out in the beginning, but they did a great job. Of course our professional staff, our our uh, secretaries and so forth did a great job getting started. So I want to congratulate them. Uh, in the agenda, we have uh, the memorandum of agreement, uh, which is A2 on the agenda. I'm asking the board to uh, approve that. We'll be meeting with the uh, chief tomorrow. Uh, just a couple things on that. There were just some additions. That's why the memorandum of agreement is a little late. They made some changes in the memorandum of agreement. They added some uh, sections. Uh, most importantly, and in most noticeable, they, they talked uh, a couple sections on uh, controlled dangerous substances. They put some things in that. Uh, Self-medication self by students, because in some, areas, some cases that's allowed now. Uh, and a lot of emphasis on cyber harassment and, and sexting, which are new parts of the uh, memorandum of agreement. So those are the areas that are, that are new to the, uh, the memorandum of agreement. But uh, again, we've had a good relationship with the police, and, and that will continue. Uh, referendum work, summer work, if you haven't noticed, Obviously, Mr. George knows we have brighter lights in the uh, Equate Pool. Uh, all the other classrooms, they, they went with the LED lights. And, and I know Ridgeway, notoriously, was always very uh, dark in the classrooms. Uh, they have the dark ceilings of the new lights. Uh, I think the first day or two, the teachers wore sunglasses. I think that kind of adjusted them. Uh, but uh, I think that the new lighting, in addition to being brighter, they're all obviously staying with some energy, too. So uh, I don't know as far as the electric. Some things you may not have noticed is the HVAC. They've done uh, they've done a lot of work on the roofs. Uh, they've done a lot of work uh, on uh, some of the other areas for, for lighting. We do have vestibules in the remaining schools. Uh, they're in the process now of adding the security part to that and, and the additional cameras and the buzzing in. So all of our schools will have at least two doors. Uh, and again, uh, remember my conversation with 
former Chief Lomachowski and now uh, Chief Parker, anything that would send barriers up and if you have two or three uh, vestibules in there, then, uh, that's obviously a big plus for the going forward, uh, adding the safety. And of course we have, uh, if you have not notice when we came in, the uh, grand, uh, this is Pedroza Pavilion out front, uh, and uh, that's on by the flagpole. The one nice thing about that, and I will say that, that was again a safety issue, and we kind of tried to do some troubleshooting uh, as far as the safety of the students. If, if you uh, looked at the progress out there, many times we had uh, parents dropping off students and students running out in front of the Ridgeway School where cars were going through. Uh, we put a fence there, uh, but our kids were quicker, so they were either jumping the fence or running around the fence. Uh, so we looked at things, and I know Mrs. Pedroza had a, a safety and security uh, input from the parents, and one of the things was to have staff out there, uh, having students, students sign in, and that worked well, except uh, when we had to bring in the sign-up sheet when it was raining. We had teachers with umbrellas and sheets, and it was very difficult. So that will serve as a nice shelter out there, but again, it's a safety factor, and it, it's a, a nice addition. Uh, just to give you a little update on the Heritage Mineral Committee, I'm on that committee. We'll be meeting, I believe, again tomorrow. Mr. Lorenzen and Mr. Galveo and myself met uh, with uh, representatives from uh, Hobson Hulene. And uh, really, we talked a little bit about what the potential of impact on is our schools. Because as they move forward with a building project, and it's still a ways away, but uh, I appreciate the mayor uh, putting me on that committee. It's very important, obviously, when you do any type of major development, that you look at what kind of impact it has uh, on the school district and the town. So we have uh, input in right from the ground floor. Uh, as I get more information, I'll be bringing it to the board and the community. Uh, but right now, they uh, they have a little idea of where our schools are, what our capacities are, and if they're going to build certain houses, what impact they're going to have, and whether we need additional schools or or other, other things as far as facilities and so forth. Sometimes it may not mean additional school, but it may mean bigger, some of the bigger areas like the cafeteria or the gymnasium may have to grow in certain, certain areas. So those are things that are in the conversation uh, and uh, we're looking ahead to some of those things. And uh, again, it's, it's, it could change the complexion of this whole town uh, if, they, if they had so many houses in there. So that's uh, something that it's important that the board's aware of and, and we're all aware of. It. What, uh, what the impacts going to be on the schools. Uh, back to school nights are coming up. Uh, MTS, I believe, is tomorrow, the 17th. Uh, Whiting is the 21st at 6 o'clock. Ridgeway coming up on the 24th. Uh, middle school is on October 1st. Regional day is October 6th. And the high school is October 8th. Uh, probably dispense, uh, you know, they're very disappointed, I'll probably dispense with the principal's uh, our report today because we're going to do a lot of back to school nights and we'll get those people involved with uh, a lot of things coming up. So hopefully we'll have a good turnout with the parents. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great time to get back into the schools and see what's going on. Uh, I know the board members will be there and uh, uh, it should be uh, we're, we're booked for the next couple of weeks as far as back to school nights. And the last thing I want to do mention is uh, on the agenda we have a number of retirees uh, this, uh, this agenda. And just a simple, I think I did my addition correctly, on the agenda with all the people retiring, we have about 165 years of experience uh, that are going to be leading the uh, I, I know you're talking for the service and not because of the retirement. <laughs> really, and, and you think about it, and, you know, you come to school every day, you come to the district every year, there are certain things you take for granted. And there's some staff members that have really committed not only their professional career, but basically their life here at Manchester. And uh, sometimes uh, we take a lot of that for granted. Sometimes you're only recognized when you're retired. I hope that's not the case here, but uh, I think it's, it's a very close knit group. Our staff is, is, uh, is, is a great staff. I do want to recognize, again, we have a, a lot of people who put in uh, a, lot of, a lot of their time here. Uh, just going through very quickly, because I think it, it deserves mention. Uh, Linda Casco is our regional day paraprofessional, has been with us for 10 years. Uh, Mr. Galveo has done a great job for us in the building and grounds. Uh, has been here for five years. Uh, Tina Galveo, been a custodian in, in the Whiting School, a custodian throughout the district, uh, 
school district because she does uh, also does the board office and does a fantastic job. Uh, she's been with the, the district for 27 years. Uh, Jerry DeMarco uh, at Ridgeway has been in the district for 32 years. <coughs> Bonnie Forrester has been in a number of schools, uh, probably more schools than we currently have right now. Uh, but she's been with the district for 32 years. Congratulations. How many? 37. 37. Really? In this district? Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Okay. Uh, 37, I stand corrected. Congratulations. Uh, Kate Holman. Uh, 29 years, Kate, congratulations. And Jeff Bishop from Regional Day School, uh, who's done all of our signs and done all, a lot of things with toys for the students and so forth. Uh, Mr. Wood, we call him, uh, has been with the district for 30 years. So uh, again, I think they all deserve a round of applause. Just as a side, talking to, to Mr. Bishop and Mr. Lorenzo, I had a meeting with him the other day, uh, and obviously he's torn about you know retiring or whatever. But his story was he came to Regional Day, uh, he had eight years in, and he wanted to get vested, so he wanted to see if he could get two more years in. He stayed for third. So, uh, that's the kind of that's the kind of staff we have. Here. So congratulations to everyone there, uh, and that's really my report. Thank you, Mr. Lorenzo. I just have one item that's uh, on the agenda. There's a resolution on the agenda to approve a flexible spending account, or FSA. Uh, the FSA became required in Chapter 78. Uh, up until now, we hadn't had an interest in anyone participating in the plan. Uh, now we've had a couple of people reach out to me and ask me about it. So uh, on the agenda tonight, this will establish a flexible spending account. This account allows staff to participate uh, Pre -tax, a pre, in, in, in pre tax deductions to put funds towards medical and child care expenses. Uh, the minimum contribution for the medical side is going to be $500, with the maximum being $1,000 to start. The, maximum, uh, the minimum on the child care is going to be $1,000 uh, to participate, and $5,000 as a maximum. Now, again, what this plan is set up for is if you know you're going to have medical expenses, every, if you know you have out-of-pocket medical expenses every year, if you know you have out-of-pocket child care expenses every year, this, this essentially allows you to have that money deducted from your, from your check and put into this plan pre-tax, uh, and it sits there until you need it. Uh, the one catch with this plan, and this is why I say, uh, you have to know you're going to have these expenses. This isn't necessarily a savings plan where you can just put money in and accumulate it. Under IRS regulation, under a flexible spending account, if the money is not spent by the end of the plan year, the money goes back. It does not go, to, does not stay with the employee. It goes to the employer. So that's why I say, if, you know, if you're going to participate in this plan, then you need to know. For example, if your kids have braces or anything like that, you're, you know you're going to pay twenty-four hundred dollars, twenty-five hundred dollars a year. Then this is perfect for you because you know you're going to have those expenses. Or if you have childcare. You know you're going to pay ten thousand dollars a year for childcare. Something like this is perfect because you can have the money taken out of this pre-tax, so it will save you there. And then you, and then you, all you have to do is present an invoice or something like that, and then that money gets deducted and gets paid. Uh, so that is going to be uh, set up. It'll go into effect on November first. Information on the plan and an application will be sent out to all staff uh, probably this week. Uh, if there are any additional questions that come up between now and November 1st, feel free to contact my office or contact uh, Human Resources, Dodi, Dodi Hayes and Human Resources. We'll provide you any information you can. Uh, you can also contact Brown and Brown as well. Uh, after that date, you will not be able to enroll until the next open enrollment period. Uh, this will tie into our open enrollment with, with our health benefit plans as well. Section 1A minutes, numbers 1 and 
competitive college acceptances, a strong athletic program, an outstanding special education program, and perhaps most of all, a strong, proud sense of community and pride in Manchester. We want to ensure that the Manchester Township School District remains the crown jewel of this community. But how can we continue to serve the students in our care to the best of our ability when we are required to expend valuable time and energy on negotiations? That energy should be in our classrooms. That energy should be spent planning great lessons, learning to utilize all the new technology in our classrooms, and using all available means to help our students meet with academic success. Frankly, your employees, skilled, talented, dedicated, and hardworking as we are, deserve better. At this point, it seems the board is working against the interests of educational excellence. By stalling negotiations and not meeting with us until the spring, you forced us into this position. School employees now find themselves questioning if all their hard work and dedication is going unnoticed. This board has a responsibility to us, the residents, and most importantly to the students to resolve this situation. We know many of you on the school board well, and you know us. Many of us have taught your children. You know we are dedicated, highly skilled professionals take great pride in our work. It's because of our pride in our work that we expect to be treated with fairness and respect. My message tonight is really very simple. It is to remind you and the community that we care about our students. You should expect no less of us, but we ask you to show the same level of concern for us. Concern means a fair contract between us. The MTEA has planned many ways to express its determination. We have begun to communicate to the community our disappointment at this board. By far the most important thing we've done, however, is bargain in good faith. I have called upon our bargaining team to work for compromise, but it takes two to compromise. This evening, we urge you to settle the contract so we can get back to working exclusively on maintaining and improving upon the educational excellence for which all our schools are known. Thank you.